Okay, I'm starting here on chapter three. Chapter three introduces working with layers. And so I'm starting on page number 137. I'll be going straight through the pages, except for a couple of deviations, which I'll explain when I get there. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials. And over here, right-click on the tool right here, Reset All Tools, OK. And now because I, I'm going to do something else, because I can see in this from something I was doing previously, I have some colors here. So I'm just going to press letter B, not B. D, Delta, on my keyboard. B, as you saw, was the brush tool. And so that's that changed these two back to the default colors. Okay, that was page number 137. The next thing we're going to do is open the file, and the file is here in Canvas, and it's room.psd. And I'm going to go ahead and download room.psd. Because it's already a Photoshop document, all I need to do is click on that, and it's going to open. I'm going to go back real quick and that way, and I'll be doing that throughout the assignment. Okay, so in room P here, first thing we need to do is make sure the rulers are turned on. If the rulers are not turned on, you're going to press Control R as in Romeo on the keyboard. Okay, the next thing, I'm going to press Control Zero to get that to full screen. Now, the next thing we want to do, and we're still on page number 139, is to save the photo. So file save as and where i want you to be putting this is in your pictures folder okay now i'm going to go just a little bit further and put that in photoshop and i'm going to be calling it a video demonstration let's see here 8 december you do not need to put the other stuff in there that is simply for my notes Okay, that was page number 139. I am turning the page. The next pages deal with what a layer, what the layers are doing for you. If the layer allows you to manipulate individual portions of the image separate from the other images, which is a incredible power. Otherwise, we just use paint or something. Okay, I'm turning the page again. So now I'm on page number 143, and I just finished page 143. I'm on page number 144. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new layer. And we're going to create the layer via cut. So I'm going to come over here and select the Quick Selection tool. It's might be, you might see this tool here. I'm going to right click on that tool right there, Quick Selection tool. And you can see where my cursor is. I want that circle and cross completely in the carpeted area. Now I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down and drag a couple inches to the right. And now you see that the entire area here is selected. Now, still using the quick selection tool with it over this area here, I'm going to right click. I'm going to come up here, layer, layer via cut. Via simply means by way of. You may come to school via Northwestern Avenue. I've also heard it pronounced via. Both are probably right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rename this layer. You see I created a layer called layer one. I'm going to double click on the word layer one and call it the carpet layer. Okay. Do be naming these layers. I'm going to hit enter now. That's going to set it. The reason is we're going to have quite a few layers when we're done. And if you don't have layer names, it's going to make this very hard for you. So now that I've typed in carpet, I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to right click. And I'm going to select a color for the tab here. And I am looking and the color they want is yellow. Okay, and you see the tab here is yellow. The colored tabs allow us to keep the things organized by groups by using colors of common colors for various groups. In this activity, they want to make sure that you see all of the colors, and so we'll be using them as we work through. Page number 147 also mentions the visibility button. The little eyeball here is referred to as the visibility button. When I click on it, it hides that layer. So this checkerboard simply means transparent, that there's nothing here, literally nothing, that it is transparent. Okay, and so you can see that we've separated those two layers. We've separated the background layer from the carpet layer. Go ahead and leave those visibility buttons on, except for when I tell you to turn them off. 
okay, the very next thing we're going to do is bring in a second image. Now, I'll be bringing these images in using two different methods, and then I'll show you how I normally do it. And probably from that point on, I'll be doing it the way that I normally do it. So I'm going to come back to this here, and I'm going to open the sofa layer or image. I'm going to double click on sofa.psd. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open that in Photoshop. And again, I'm just going to hit the back arrow so that this goes through all of its loading when I'm there. So then we have this. Now we have the sofa here in Photoshop. Notice that the sofa here is in a lighter color. Okay. So this is the current or active image. Okay. Now this is, I clicked on room video on this one here, and I'm going to click on sofa. All I'm doing is left clicking on them to make them active. Now I'm going to go to window, arrange, and we're going to go to two up or vertical or tile all vertically. Good. Now I'm going to come over here and select the move tool. Most of the time I'll be pressing the letter V instead of clicking on the move tool. And I'm going to come over here to the sofa. And I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down, and I'm going to drag the sofa into the room and release the mouse button. Okay. Now, the sofa's right here. I'm going to go ahead and rename that sofa. Enter. And I believe we were making that tab blue. Uh, so now, yes, we're on page number 152. I'm going to right-click on sofa, and I'm going to go ahead and make that blue. When I say right click on the sofa layer, I can go ahead now and close this one because we're no longer using the sofa image. I'm going to click on the X there. Now, I do want to show you something that frequently goes wrong here. Okay. A lot of the time when a student creates this, brings the sofa in, they're on the background layer. What that would do is bring the sofa in right here. The problem is now the sofa is beneath the carpet. So if you did this and you're having this problem right here, look over here at your layers panel and you're going to see that you've got them in the wrong order. There is an instruction, a section on this where we'll do this, but I'm just going to tell you, you're going to hold the control key down to your left hand and you're going to press the square bracket key that is furthest from the letter P to do that. The other way you can move in the layers is, and I'm going to if you look there, you'll notice a little bar showed up between sofa and carpet. At that point, I can release. It's going to put them there. That's wrong. So I want to come over here, put them, select the mouse over sofa, press and hold the left mouse button down. I am holding it down and dragging it up and then releasing. And now the sofa is above the carpet where it's supposed to be for this exercise. Good. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is bring in the painting image painting. It is also a PSD file, a Photoshop file. Download painting.psd. And just go ahead and double click on that. Okay, now I'm going to, right now I'm going to back arrow there, go back to Photoshop. So for this one, there are three elements in this image. Here is the painting, here is the frame, and here is the wall behind the frame. We only want the painting in frame. So I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to come to the corner right about here. I'm going to be trying to precise. Press and hold the left mouse button down and drag so that you've selected just the painting and the frame. Now we come up here to window, come over here to arrange, and this time they want us to use horizontal instead of vertical. Okay, horizontal. Select the move tool. I'm going to come over here. Press and hold the left mouse button down and drag it into the image. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to go ahead and name this painting. I've double clicked on it. And I do want to see what color tab they want on painting. Okay, they want a red tab. So I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to select red. Okay. So we've now brought in the painting, and I think you can see that something looks wrong here. What looks wrong is the wall has a vanishing point. Okay, the vanishing point would be like somewhere way over here. Okay, so the wall is descending towards the vanishing point. The painting, on the other hand, is simply square, and it looks out of place. Obviously, we're going to fix that.
So let's make sure we're on the painting layer. Now, what I mean when I say on a layer is that the layer is the current or selected layer. And you can see that when the layer is selected, it turns to this sort of bluish gray as compared to the brownish gray. So this is my current or my selected layer. Okay. So now I'm traveling to page 159. And what I want to do is transform this image. To transform an, an object is to change is to alter its appearance by changing its size or shape. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control T as in Tango on my keyboard. Now you see sizing handles around it. Don't touch them yet. I'm going to now right click on the painting and I'm going to choose skew. And you see that on page number 160. Now what you're going to do is you're going to move the sizing handle. Okay. You're going to press the left mouse button down and you're going to pull straight down like that. Do not pull out to the sides or do other weird stuff, okay? You're going to pull straight down. And when I say straight down, what I mean is if you drew an imaginary line through the center of your mouse, that moving along that line toward you is down. So I pulled the top edge straight down. Now I'm going to pull the bottom edge up a tiny bit. What I want here is I want the top of the of the painting to be parallel to the seam along this wall. I want the bottom of the painting to be parallel to the back of the sofa. And so we've got that done. Now we can either hit enter or we can click on the check mark right here to complete the transformation process. Okay, so that was the coffee table. The next thing we're, sorry. That was the painting. The next thing we're going to do is bring in the coffee table image, which starts on page number 161. So I'm coming back to here, and I'm going to open the coffee table image. I'm going to download it. Now, notice this is not a JPEG, so we can't just double-click on it to open it. I always have students that try double-clicking on it, and it doesn't work. So now I'm here. I'm going to come over here to File open. And now I'm going to go to my download folder, downloads. And you can see that I just downloaded the coffee table. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on open. Great. Now I'm going to copy this whole thing, select it all by con pressing control A. That was all. Control C, that was copy. Go back to our current image, control V as in Victor. That was paste. You can see layer one here, C-O-F-F-E-E-T-A-B-L-E, -E -E, coffee table. And I'm just going to look and see, and they wanted that gray. So I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to right click on the word coffee table, and I'm going to select gray. Good. Again, I can get rid of coffee table here. It is actually useful to get rid of these when you're not using them because they are using memory and that's going to slow down how or and basically affect how fast and how well Photoshop works. At this point, we're going to hide all of the other layers. I'm doing that by clicking. When I say clicking, I'm left clicking on the visibility buttons indicates layer visibility. I'm now going to zoom in to about, I believe, 125, 125. And you saw where I did that was this right down here. I typed in a number and then I hit enter. So we're going to be using several of the eraser tools in the next few steps. Okay. So the first eraser tool I'm going to use is the, mag is the magic eraser tool. So tolerance here. A, we need to adjust the tolerance on this. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the page here. A lower tolerance erases pixels within a range of color values that are similar to the pixel you click. Okay, what that means. First off, here you see the eraser of the star. The star is, is basically what's going to be the site or what you have over the object when you click. If you have a high number here like 50, and I do want you to type in 50 right now, what that's going to do is it's going to erase more stuff, okay? more things will be erased with a higher number. A lower number, it's going to reduce less things, less color values. Okay, so let's go up here and take a look. Okay, anti-aliasing, you may remember that affects how the curves are, are done. Contiguous, leave that on right now. 
opacity. Opaque is basically the opposite of transparent. If it is 100% opaque, it is not transparent. We leave, we're leaving this like it's a 100%. Otherwise, what it would do is leave a shadow of itself. You may have seen this effect when you see, as an example, a flag superimposed or sort of over a picture or, or of a person or a place. So we and that is something we can do here. There are other places we can do that. So pasting, I'm leaving it 100%. I'm coming down here to the wallpaper and I am clicking once. Okay, so I clicked once. A comment here. If you click and it suddenly completely messes up your picture, immediately press Control Z as in Zulu. Try again. If that doesn't work, then you will need to lower the tolerance value some. Now I'm going to click on the wallpaper in here. Okay, that got rid of the wallpaper inside of there. Great. Now I'm going to come down to about here. I'm going to click. Good. Right there. Good. If we keep going, what's going to happen is it's going to start taking, okay, chunks. Typically, it wouldn't have worked. I'm just going to tell you this. Control Z. Normally, that wouldn't have worked. It would have taken a chunk out of my out of my thing here. Okay, so just be aware. Now, but I can now lower the tolerance. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lower that tolerance to 25. Now I'm going to click on this board right here. Okay, come on. I'm going to zoom in some at this point. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in to about 400. Now, if you zoom in and you can't find what you're doing and trust me this happens you're going to come down here to navigator and you can see that little red box and i press and hold the left mouse button down and now i can easily see where i'm at i'm going to click on this thing right here now that's gone good coming over to here want to get rid of it here good now we're going to have a problem when it comes to erasing things in here Honestly, this time it worked much better than it usually will, and it worked much better than it probably will for you when you're doing this. 125. So what we need to do is erase the stuff in here. To do that, we're going to use the regular eraser tool, but we're going to use another tool at the same time. I'm going to zoom in a bit more to 150. Now, this is where I mentioned that I actually do use the polygonal lasso tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this inside corner right here, and I'm going to click. I'm drawing a line. I'm going to this corner, inside corner right here. What I'm doing right now is I'm creating a selection. I clicked. I clicked. I clicked. And I completed it there. So I've created a selection. Now, if I use the regular eraser tool, okay, and you saw where I got to that. Remember, you can change the size of the eraser tool with the square bracket keys next to the letter P. The one closest makes it smaller, the one further makes it larger. Now I can just come over here and I can use the regular eraser tool, do that erase, and control D. And it leaves this edge here nice and sharp. Whereas if I try to just do this by hand, it always comes out looking crummy. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing, polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to go to right here. Click over here, click down here. Doesn't matter where here. I'm going to come back to there. Good. And now I have a selection. There we go. And so now Control D. Don't leave yourself on the eraser tool, particularly when you're working with magnification because it's easy to mess up what you're doing. 600 is what I just typed in. Okay, so I'm going to go to a couple of places here that give me trouble. Okay, right here, you see some stuff left behind. Again, to get those nice crisp lines. Okay, there it is. And now, go back to the regular eraser tool. Got rid of those, good. Let's go back to just the move tool or anything, control D. Don't leave it on the erase tool while we're doing this, or you're going to mess yourself up. Now, these here, sometimes the magic eraser tool works here. Sometimes it makes a mess. We're going to try the magic eraser tool. But, okay, it basically, so I'm going to come over here, back over here again to the 
eraser tool, magic eraser tool. Now try to click on some of that blue. You see though, it didn't do all of it. So I'm clicking one at a time and then down here on this. And we basically got inside of that rail. We're going to try this rail. This one should work easily. We still need to get that little brown down there. This one should work pretty well. Okay, this one's going to make a mess. So control Z. So I'm going to actually just go ahead and do the exact same thing I've, you've seen me doing before. The polygonal lasso tool. Just going to come over here to here. Draw my line down to there. To there. Back up to here. And across to here. Good. And the regular eraser tool. Now, I'm going to go back to the Move tool just because, again, I don't want to accidentally click on my picture and totally mess things up. Come on. Oh, Control-D. If you have a selection, remember, it's not going to erase anything except what's in that selection. And this one, again, I'm going to have to do a lot of that. So I'm just going to Control-Z because I did it twice. Go back to there. Okay. And I am purposely trying to show a lot of different tools as I'm doing this, too. Click, 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 click. Regular eraser tool. Good. Okay. Control-D to deselect. I definitely don't click now because you'll make a mess. Okay. So the next one, let's see if the magic eraser tool get that one for me. It looks like it will because I've got a lot of light color there. There and there. That one worked pretty well. This one's just not going to work well. So I'm going to go ahead, go back and use a polygonal lasso tool. If you look at the book, they tell you to use the regular eraser tool here. With They don't mention the bound, putting in the selection. And it can be done. It's just harder. It's actually harder to do it without creating that selection than it is to create the selection. Move tool, control D. Okay, control zero. And now I'm going to make everything visible again. Now, something I'm going to do here with the move tool, I'm going to wiggle this thing around. If you have some specks of the wall left, you'll see them wiggling along with this. And if they're there, just use the regular eraser tool. And that's a place just use regular eraser tool. Make sure you're on the coffee table layer. And then just using that, like if I had a speck left, you know, right here, I just go like click to get rid of that speck. Maybe I do have a speck right there. I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the move tool. And I'm going to move the move coffee table back to here. And we see the same problem. The angle of the coffee table is simply different than everything else. I'll just tell you that took us all the way through the section on erasing. And now we're, going to, now we're on page number 169. And we're going to adjust the coffee table, this time by changing perspective. So on the move tool, on the coffee table layer, I'm going to press control T. I'm going to right click on the coffee table. I'm going to select perspective. This time I'm going to go to the center sizing handle right here. I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down. I'm going to lift straight up. What I want is I want the back edge of the coffee table to be parallel to the lines on the couch. And now they are. That's great. I'm going to click on the check mark for, to complete the transformation. By the way, I could have also pressed the enter key to do that. Okay. And at this point, we have the coffee table in the room. Good. The next thing we're going to do is bring in the ivy image to create the ivy layer. So I'm coming over here, here, ivy.tiff. Oops, no, oh, double clicked on it. Actually, I triple clicked. Download. It downloaded. Great. Going back to Photoshop here, I'm going to go File, Open. And there's my IV. Open. Okay. Control A, Control C. Come back to here. Control V. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I haven't saved in a little while, so I'm just going to hit Control S to save. Okay. That came up this time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Remember, you can click on Don't Show Again. Okay. 
Now I'm going to zoom in a bit again to be able to see what I'm doing there. This is the one I zoom in to 75 on. I basically want to see all of it, but I want it as big as it can be on my screen. So the eraser tool we're going to use this time is the background eraser tool. Now the way this one works, okay, it's going to look at the color underneath of the cross, and it's going to act on that with everything in the circle. So as an example, if I were to come over here and I were to click, okay, on the white, you notice it took out the white but left the green. Don't do what I just, but because I want to show you a couple more things here. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, and this is in the book, we are on page number 171. I'm going to select discontiguous, okay? Now, here's kind of the trick to this one, is you see the cross in the circle and it operates within the circle. I'm going to come over here, make sure hardness is at 100%, and I'm going to drag that size slider all the way over, okay? And then I'll click on to close that. Now, what discontiguous does is it's going to act on everything, even if it's bound. So even these little white specks right in here are going to be acted on. So I'm going to come over here to some white, and I'm going to click once. All the white's gone. Okay. So that one got rid of all of the white. Now we're going to change the tolerance down to about 25 again. Okay. I'm just going to click up here so that I'm clicking somewhere to be there. Okay, now I'm going to scroll down a tiny bit to the brown here. Now, when I say scrub, what I mean is you're going to move the cursor back and forth a little. So I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down and scrub back and forth. And I don't know if you can see my screen, but I'll see well enough, but a whole lot of stuff just disappeared as I sort of scrubbed around here. Don't touch the green as you do this. Remember, if you mess up, immediately hit Control Z, as in Zulu. Now, something that happens now and then is that somebody will do this, and the, suddenly all of the green will get super faded. Okay, stop immediately. Control Z. Try again. Okay, it just happens. The spot you were on, it acted that way. It, so I've, ha I've seen it happen. Don't worry about it. Just undo. Okay, now I'm going to do the exact same thing with this section of wall right here. Now, you can, the, the reason I'm working over here is, frankly, this one is harder to get to. Just a moment. So I'm going to come over here. Oops. It's on the other screen. And I'm going to click here and just sort of move a little bit. And I'm going to click here and just sort of, you see that I'm not touching the green. There's that little bit left right there that I'm going to get. Okay, we saw a bit of a shift in the color, but it wasn't much. If you're curious, control Z, you see that? A little bit of a color shift. So I think I'm going to lower my tolerance down to 15, okay? Now I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, okay? Now to zoom, something I do is I press and hold and stop that. Good. And I just drag the, so I'm going to just drag it this way. And I'll drag a little bit more. And you can see where I'm going after is a spot right here. So now I'm going back to that tool, to the same tool, the background eraser tool. I'm very carefully going after that stuff right there. You see how I'm scrubbing it slowly going away. Okay. Get rid of that. Again, don't touch the green while you're doing this. Okay, good. Now that that's done, again, I'm going to just select the move tool. Controls zero. Hey, I do need to change the name of this, and I, for whatever reason, missed it when we started. Ivy, Ivy Y, enter. I'm going to right-click on the Ivy after I've done that, and I'm going to select green, making a green tab. We still need to get these chains up here, okay? So just so you can see where we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and go again to uh, 75. Back to that tool, and I'm going to go after these chains up here. I think I'm going to set this back to about... Uh, the 25 we had it at. I'm going to go after these chains 
and I'm pressing and holding the left mouse button down and just sort of moving back and forth over these chains up here. And they are slowly being erased. And you saw that. Just sort of the scrubbing back and forth motion and that got rid of them. Good. So we're basically done with that part, control zero. Now, if you look at page number 173, you see that they base that on page number 173 that they've resized this. So I'm going to go ahead and press control T. And this time I'm just going to go sort of free form. I'm going to the corner here. I'm pressing and holding the left mouse button down and just sort of making it sort of like that. And now I go to the center of it, press and hold the left mouse button down on it, drag it over. If you look at the picture, what you see is it's on the mantle, about one third mantle, and about one third is on the mantle, and the rest of it's hanging down, kind of like you'd see a plant in somebody's house. And that looks about right. This shelf over the fireplace is the mantle, okay? Because we'll be using that word several times. This looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the check mark to complete the transformation. Okay, we have just finished the ivy layer. We will be going back to it to do some other stuff later on. At this point, we're going to add the pole lamp to the room. So I'm going back to this. I'm going to open the pole lamp image. Sorry, pole lamp.psd. Don't know what I was thinking. I'm, now it is a PSD, so I can just go ahead and double click on that. I am going to go back here. That'll just save time between the movements. Okay, and again, I'm just going to press Control A, Control C, come back here to the demo, Control V. Let me go ahead and close Pole Lamp here. I'm going to name this layer Pole Lamp. And I do want to see what color they made it. They went for orange, so I'm going to hit Enter, and I'm going to right-click on that again, and I'm going to go to orange. Good. Great. Now I'm going to my move tool and I'm going to move the pole lamp into the corner like I'm supposed to. And right now you should see the problem. The problem is that it's in front of the other layers. What they're trying to communicate to you with this step is that whatever is on top of the stack is on front of the picture. Okay. Whatever is on the bottom of the stack is behind everything in the picture. The background is behind, as an example, the painting because the painting is above the background in the stack. So we need to move this in the stack. There are two ways of moving it in the stack. What the book tells you to do is to hold the control key down and press the square bracket key. And you can see that that moves us down so if it were behind the sofa layer. Okay. I will tell you the way I normally do this is I just put the mouse over it. I press and hold the left mouse button down. And you see a little bar moving through the stack. And so then I put it where I there. Either way works, okay? Just that's what I'm trying to point out here. So I'm holding the control key, pressing the square bracket key close to the letter P. That works fine too. Both methods work. Now go ahead and click on the IV layer again. Okay, now we're going to add the mantle decorations to the room. The reason we clicked on the IV layer again, the reality is it wouldn't have mattered that much, but if, if we had stayed on the pole lamp layer when we created the next layer, it would have put it between the pole lamp and the sofa. Okay, we want it, we, so we want it on top. We want the ivy layer. Okay, let's go back to here and find our mantle decorations.psd. Download. Double click. Again, I'm just going to come back here. I'm going to hit back right now. It just saves a little bit of time when we're doing this. Control A, Control C, go to our image. Control V, and I'm going to go ahead and close that this one here right now, and I'm going to rename this one Mantle Decorations. If you can't spell Mantle Decorations, I got it wrong the first time. Uh, look on page number 175 in the NTEL. Mantle Decorations, enter, and they want us to right-click on that and choose Violet. Okay. The first thing they want us to do here is to resize the mantle decorations. So if the mantle decoration being the active layer, control T. Here to resize, we're just going to come up here and you notice I double clicked in the width and I typed in 50. And I came over here to the height, come on, and I double clicked and I typed in 50. Okay, that did that part. Now. I'm going to move my cursor into the bounding box. You see it turns the move cursor again. I'm going to, come on. 
and I'm going to move it up here to the top of the mantle. Now, what's wrong here? If you look at the line right here on the mantle, okay, you see that it's basically not straight up and down. It's because of the vanishing point, the perspective lines in the room. So I want to make the, these here match this line. So I want to lean the top a little bit over to the right. To do that, I'm going to right click in there. I'm going to choose perspective. I'm going to go to this top center sizing handle. I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down. And I'm going to drag just a little bit to the right. And you see that that basically got these. So the line here is parallel to the line here. Okay. And that looks fine to me. You can just hit enter to finish the transformations. You could have also clicked the check mark that you saw up there. Both would have worked just fine. Let's go ahead and save again. Control S. Every once in a while in the book, it says to save a file. That's to remind us to save. Now, the next thing we're going to drag in is the potted plant image. When we do that, we're going to be dragging it in and making a layer mask. This is different than erasing. With the layer mask, we can go back later and remove the layer mask, which is handy at times if you're not 100% sure how you want something to look when you're done. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to select the potted plant image. Download potted plant. It's downloaded. Good. Okay, now I'm going to go to File, Open, Potted Plant, Open, Good, Control A, Control C, Control V, rename that Potted Plant, Enter. And because it is a plant, I'm going to right click on it and select green. It does make more sense to have them in, and I do feel like I misspelled potted plant. I can't believe I misspelled potted plant, but I think I did. No, P O T T. Okay. Anyways, so at this point, we made it green. I'm going to zoom in on it a bit at this point. Okay. So I'm going to go to uh, 120. So to use the layer mask tool, it's a new tool. We've used add layer style. Right next to it, you see a square with a circle in it. And if I float over it just right, it will say add layer mask. Make sure you're on the potted plant layer when you do this and click on add layer mask. You now see the white box there. Okay, so now I'm going to press the letter B as in Bravo. Uh, make sure you're actually on the brush tool. A problem some students had is that they went and they selected other tools here. Make sure you're on the brush tool, okay? We want to make sure that the brush tool is... Well, so again, I'm going to press the square bracket keys. You notice the number here was changing. And so those are some of the tools right there. You can change it size here. Go ahead and close that. Now, what I'm going to do is press and hold the left mouse button down and absolutely nothing happened. Okay, so the first thing I notice, quite honestly, is I've got white over black here. So I'm gonna press the letter X to reverse those colors. Before you do that, you're probably better off pressing the letter D as in, sorry, yeah, D as in Delta for the default, then X. X as in X-ray, you want black over white right here. And now, as you see, when you come and do this, it's going to, er it's not erasing. The key is it's placing a transparent mask over it. Now, I'm going to show you something that typically happens when I'm doing this is you always wind up at the top sort of fuzzy like that. It didn't really come out right. This is an example of where this is useful. I click there. I'm not unerasing, okay? I'm revealing it from the mask. And now I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to go ahead and use this right here. I'm going to go ahead and make a nice big selection right there. Good. Now I'll go back to switching that back, going back to my brush tool, and now I can go ahead and, and finish that. And control delta. And now we got that nice square line at the top. And oops, while I was talking, I did that. Again, all I'm going to do is switch these two and bring it right back in, just like that. Now I'm going to go back to move tool, 
control zero. Now, one, in, one inconvenient thing is the next point of the book shows you a picture of where this was supposed to have been moved to was page 185. We're not there yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it to where it shows it on page 185. That's where it needs to go is right there. Okay. Make sure that it's completely on the edge here. We'll make some later steps easier. Okay, at this point, we're going to start doing what they're referring to as fine-tuning layers. One of the first things we're going to do is change the opacity of these guys right here. You notice that this entire room is very soft as far as the picture, as far as the colors go. Nothing standing out and bold. We want to change these guys here just a little bit. So we're going to click on Mantle Decorations. We're going to change opacity. Remember, if something is 100% opaque, it is 0% transparent. If it is 0% opaque, it is 100% transparent. So we're just going to move this through here. Okay, you can see what it's doing. And we're going to set that to 85, except that 85 is really hard for me to hit. So I'm going to type in 85. Okay, good. So now we've done a little bit of a change on the mantle decoration layer by adjusting the opacity. Good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the levels. And we're talking about levels adjustment. We're talking about tonal changes. To And so in... We're going to come over here and select the sofa layer, okay? Having done that, we're going to come over here to the levels. And you see right there where it says levels, right? I'm going to click on levels on the sofa layer. Now, I want to show you, I'm going to purposely do something wrong so you see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and grab the slider here, and the whole room is changing, right? That is because we simply put the levels tool in here. We want to clip it to the sofa layer. So we're going to come over here to this button right here, which says click to clip to layer. Now it's going to affect only the layer that that arrow is pointed at. Okay. Now you can see what we're doing here. It actually gives some numbers here. To be honest, what I'd really rather you do is play with it. I'd rather you come up here, click on red. Slide some stuff around, okay? Green. Again, slide some stuff around. Blue. Slide some stuff around. Okay, change it to a color that it was not originally. By the way, you can get some really absurd colors on this that are just ugly. But go ahead and change it to a color it was not here originally. Now, I have that, so that's that done. I have had some students ask me how they can do the sofa pillows separate. So I'm going to go ahead and close this panel for right now. The easy way to do that, you don't have to do this. I just want to show it to you. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool. We come over here and I'm going to select the pillows. So I got that pillow selected. Make sure you're on add to selection. And I'm going to come over here and select the other pillow. I'm just going to get all of it real quick. Great. Now, oh no, I slipped and I did that, right? That's fine. I'm just going to use subtract from selection and get rid of that other stuff there. That wasn't what I wanted. I think you know that I didn't actually do it on accident. Okay, good. So now that I've got that done, I would simply right click on them and I would layer via copy. And now I have another layer here somewhere. Control Z. Undo that entirely. You know what I did wrong? I wasn't on the sofa layer. Now let's go ahead and right click on them and layer via copy. Okay. So now we got this layer one here. Name, I'm going to name it pillow. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and it's, and the sofa was blue. So pillow is going to be blue also. And I'm going to grab pillow and pull it up and above this here. Now, the reason everything went weird on us is because the, la the layer mask got lost. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to open this and turn, and turn clip to layer back on. Okay, close that. Now you can see that these are a different object than the sofa itself. And if you wanted to, you could again go into the layer levels. Remember to clip to layer so that it's only acting on the pillows. And you could go ahead and do weird stuff with the pillows too, okay? 
So just letting you know how that could be done. You didn't have to do that. It's simply a question I get asked pretty frequently on this. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is work with hue and saturation. The hue is the shade of the color, and the saturation is the intensity of the color. Click on the coffee table layer. This time you're going to go to the hue and saturation button. You can see right there it says hue and saturation. I'm going to click on that. Again, click to layer. Now, again, what I really want you to do is play with these a little bit. So I'm going to go to something really ugly, purple, and I'll mess up the saturation a bit. Eh, that's actually pretty good where it is. Okay. And lightness. Make it a little bit darker. There we go. Okay. So just go ahead and really, I'd rather you mess with these than that you not see what they do or not understand what you're doing and just type in numbers because the book told you to type in a number. Okay. Good. Okay. Next thing we're doing, brightness and total contrast. This, I just said I wasn't, didn't want you to type in numbers because you, so I'm going to come down here to click on the background layer. Okay. Now here, I'm going to come down here to this tool right here. Okay. Looks kind of like a circle. Click on that. Brightness and contrast. Again, I'm going to clip to layer. If I don't clip to layer and see what it's going to do, it still really is only acting on that one layer. I'm going to click, clip the layer anyways. Here, we're going to go ahead and turn brightness to 10. I want you to see what it's doing, though, okay? Brightening it up, so 10. Now, I want you to play with contrast for a minute. So, contrast is basically the shadows, okay? The strength of it. And we're going to put in negative 10. Great. Okay. And hide that one. Layer styles. Now, what this one does is alter this layer by adding depth and shadow. So what we're going to do on this one is we're going to go to our IV layer. Remember earlier I told you we're going to do a little bit more to our IV layer because it does sort of look a little washed out. I'm not going to deny that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and select the IV layer, select Add Layer Style button, and we're going to come up here to Bevel and Emboss. Okay. Give it a second to actually come to life. Here we will do what it says, but again, I would like you to sort of move it so you can see what's going on here. Depth. See what it's doing there? Okay. So we want to change that to 50. Okay. Size. Again, play with it a little. Okay. Sort of, sort of a cool effect. And we want to put 10 in there. I do want you to, to move these sliders as you're doing this, though. And soften. It's kind of hard to see what it's doing at this magnification. I'm going to tell you that they want it set to 5 pixels. Okay? Good. And now, having done all... Come on. Well, I'm trying to grab just to tell you. I'm trying to left-click on this bar right here, if you're wondering where I'm clicking to move it. And I'm going to click on OK. And that added a little bit of effect to the IV layer here, okay? If you're not sure what it added, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm on the Zoom tool or on the Move tool. Then I'm going to go to Zoom, and I will zoom in on the IV layer here. Okay. And we can see what it's doing by clicking on, that, on the Visibility button, and you can see that it's adding a bit of shadow to it. Okay, so that's basically what that was doing. Control zero. Apply a layer style. Okay, the last one here of a clone stamp tool I will be doing as a separate video. Simply because that one people need to be able to refer back to while they're doing it here in class. So I'm going to stop the video.